What is going on, everybody? It is Friday, July the 23rd, and that means it's time for my news radar. On this episode, we have a new Windows 11 update. We have Z Fold 3 news. We have some Apple uh, trash talking maybe to do. And we have a small piece of Surface Duo news. But before we get to all of that, if you're new to the channel, please do consider hitting that subscribe button or maybe leaving a like if you did enjoy this video. Thanks. So let's first talk about the latest update to Windows 11. We just got build. 22,000.100 and it was actually a pretty big one for me. The feature set, not so rich necessarily, but there's a couple of bug fixes. One in particular that I am super pleased uh, has been fixed. So let's look here at what we've got. One thing you may notice is you may see the Teams chat button pop up on your taskbar. That's the thing that, that you know, this Teams integration is rolling out. If Teams is installed, you'll have this, this little icon on your taskbar. When you open it up, you'll have your chat list there for, uh, for Teams. So that is now rolling out. The hidden icons fly out in the lower right hand of the taskbar is updated to match the new visuals of Windows 11. So if we do this real quick, I'll show you that and ignore the, the infinite uh, over here, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. This is what it um, used to look like, and I actually have done the update. But if you read here, it says the hidden icons fly out in the lower right uh, may not look right after updating this build. Toggling between two themes will correct the issue. So, I figure what I would do here, since mine is not looking correct, is that I would uh, take the opportunity here to show you in real time what that correction uh, would actually look like. So let's drag this over and let's go to personalizations and let's go to themes and we'll click on that one. And by the way, that was much, much faster of a transition between themes than it used to be. And then back to my normal one. And as you can see now, it has now changed. Uh, it's got rounded corners now. It's still black, which is, you know, I guess I'm in dark mode, so I guess that is why that is the way it is. But at any rate, there you go. That is now updated. Added the ability to quickly access focus assist setting directly in the notification center. So you'll see here there's a button there for focus assist right there in the notification shade. When a background activity from an app requires attention, the app will flash in the taskbar to get your attention. In Windows 11, we have updated this design so that it still grabs your attention, but still with a calming treatment that minimizes the impact of unwarranted distractions. Touch keyboard icon in the taskbar has been adjusted to be more consistent with the size of the other icons in the taskbar. And they've added some new animations to the Microsoft Store to make things look a little bit smoother and nicer. But here's the big one for me, right? So it fixes. We fix the issue that's causing explorer.exe to crash when the date and time button on the taskbar is clicked to access new notifications with focus assist turned off. What they're talking about here is that before, when I would click on my date and time, I showed you this in the last, and, and uh, I believe the last news radar, when I click on this, my taskbar would reload, my desktop would reload. That was explorer.exe crashing. That is now fixed. I do not have focus assist turned off because that was actually the, the workaround was to enable focus assist, which basically kept your notifications from popping up. That would fix the problem, but I like having my notifications popping up, so I don't really want to do that. At any rate, it is now fixed. You can see here there are quite a number of bug fixes that have been rolled out and what i'll do here is i will as always put the link to this uh in the description so that you can go check these out yourself as well all right so in the world of samsung galaxy z fold z flip products we have a little bit of actually kind of hilarious news so just a couple days ago d brand tweeted out a a, a a gif or a gif if you're one of those people uh, of the Z Fold 3 showing off the different skins available. The funny thing here is that the Z Fold 3 has not been officially announced. The design had not been officially shown off. Yet, uh, D-Brain just went ahead and um went ahead and went with it. They just went ahead and, <laughs> and blew the cover off this thing. So there you go. 
that is what the Z Fold 3 is going to look like. We pretty much knew this already, but now we know 100% because dbrand is just out there blowing the lid off stuff. And of course they will have the design so they can get their skins produced and made ready for launch. So this is 100% confirmed now. This is what the Z Fold 3 does look like. We also did get confirmation that August 11th is the date for the next Galaxy Unpack, which is where Samsung is going to announce the Z Fold 3, the Z Flip 3, and some other things. I told you this about a week ago give or take that that was the date and i even went over what was going to be announced at that event so if you missed that video maybe i'll, I'll remember to put a link on the screen here somewhere hopefully if i can remember to do that because i have a full breakdown of everything to expect at that event because there's actually quite a bit going on there they even went as far that was to open up reservations for the things they haven't told us that they're announcing you can go to this page put in and put in your name and your email address and you can reserve Whatever it is they're going to be announcing on August 11th, which of course we know, Z Flip, Z Fold, some new earbuds, some new watches. And by doing that, you're going to get some extra stuff. You're going to get an extra $100 in trading credit. You're going to get 12 months of Samsung Care Plus included. And some sort of extra special offer that they're not talking about just yet. They're also going to now allow you to trade in two devices at once. So the Z Fold 3, which is looking like $1699 is going to be the price. Well, maybe you've got two newer devices that you can trade in towards this thing, plus the extra $100 of trade-in value. And then you've got 0% APR financing, no down payment. Maybe they're, they're really interested in making sure the Z Fold 3 launches really, really well and gets out into a lot of people's hands early. Pretty cool that they're, they're really doing a lot here. So I mentioned I might do a little bit of Apple trash talking here in this video, and that's where this is going to take place. So you guys all know about this MagSafe uh, charger, this MagSafe charging pack that was announced um, just a little bit ago. Here's actually an image of this thing. On paper, you know, maybe it looks okay. So it's this little pack that magnetically attaches to your iPhone and charges your iPhone. Seems pretty good. However, the specs on this thing immediately raised some eyebrows from some people in the tech community. The problem appeared to be that it was rather low in capacity. And there's a lot of speculation about what was going on here. It was 1,460 milliamp hours, but it was also like 11 watt hours. So... We didn't really know how much this thing would charge because if it's 11 watt hours, it was about a full battery of an iPhone 12, but wireless charging is wildly inefficient and it only charges at five watts. So we just didn't know how this thing would actually work. You slap this thing on the back of your iPhone, is it gonna fully charge your phone? We didn't know, we speculated that maybe it wouldn't. It didn't look like it would. Well, now we know for sure uh, that for $100, you can top off a partially charged iPhone. Look at this tweet here from Brandon Butch. He says, he's very disappointed. For $99, I should be able to use my phone while charging and gain more than 2% back. So he attached this pack when it was 100%, his phone was at 25%. And he used his phone about 60% of the time while it was charging. And while the pack lost 61% of its battery, it only charged the phone 2%. To $100, it charged his phone 2% while being attached. That is not just bad, that is absolutely brutally awful. Absolutely horrible. He did update that on iOS 14.7, instead of the 15 beta, it's a little bit better. So again, 18%, attach this thing, when this thing had dropped to 22%, he'd gained 20% battery. Some of this is because of the iOS version not being the beta. Some of this might have been because he used the phone less or differently. Hard to say. At any rate, three hours of usage got him 20% battery. Terrible. It's $100. This is like one of the worst products I've ever heard of. And let's make it even worse because <laughs> Quinn Nelson tweeted this. The magnet just isn't very strong. So if you're holding this thing and you go to press any of the buttons on the side, you're liable to just chuck your phone <laughs> right off the side of this thing. I, I, <sighs> now, somehow, even with this performance being absolutely abysmal, The Verge still managed somehow to find a way to give it a 7. Works great as a wired MagSafe charger. That sort of defeats the purpose, right? 
uh, well-integrated iPhone software. Uh, you know, you'd expect that. Look, it, I mean, you can see in these screenshots when you hook it up, you can see the charge of the of the little pack, which is really cool. You know, no one's questioning the Apple. You know, doesn't really polish things to the utmost degree and make really nice products. But like I said in a tweet the other day, it's a really finely polished turd, but it's still a turd. Can also charge other Qi devices like AirPods. Okay. Doesn't provide a full charge for any iPhone 12 model. It can't charge any of your phones all the way. <laughs> and it's a hundred dollars. Buy this one instead. It's $45. It's 5,000 milliamp hours. Why, Apple? And then last but not least, I promised a little bit of Surface Duo news, and that's what I have. I have a little bit of Surface Duo news. We just got an update for Microsoft Launcher, and it added, as you see in this headline here, adds this new feature to Surface Duo, and I can feel you all getting your hopes up. You're excited, you're pumped, you're ready to go. And then you find out that it added the ability to easily turn on Android work profile while opening apps, opening groups of work apps on Surface Duo. So I guess, yeah, if you use your Duo for work and you have a work profile, that would be a small improvement for you. But that's it. That's all they added. Uh, still no custom icons. Still no custom uh, layouts in terms of uh, width and height, number of icons you can fit rows and columns would be the correct term uh yeah still no feature parity if you install microsoft launcher on your you know any other phone you'll have more features than you do on the duo which is the device that they make so that's still a fun a fun thing that they've not addressed for some reason after like one year so guys, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video, and thanks for clicking that like button. If you did, thanks to those of you who have supported me on scaryaflutterall.com or through my Flatter account. Stay tuned for more content just like this. Watch out for the next news radar coming on Monday. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. <laughs>